Welcome to WRL Broadcast. I am Hate Mail. With me today, we have the world famous Ogre Barbarian. Hello. And we also have the Master King Moderator, Joker. Hello. <laughs> and, uh,. <laughs> Today, this is the Meta Report, and we are talking about Siren. So, as the resident bleeders, and she is also a villain, so that makes her a favorite of Jokers. We are um, going to go through her since her Alliance Day finally starts. And uh, so far, she definitely seems pretty improved. I like her a lot more than I used to. I've never been huge in bleeders, but with so many bleed characters that have come out recently, I've been playing with them a lot more, and they're definitely a lot more effective. So, uh, Joker, we'll start with you. What did you think of her rework, and how are you liking her now? Um, on paper, it didn't look uh, all that impressive, but uh, <clears throat> once I got to use her in action and, and face teams with her, um, she's, uh, she's definitely gotten a decent rework. Um, you know, I've gone into a few matches uh, against her and uh, didn't bring any can't-miss tunes, and uh, watching how those evasions can stack up now, it, it can get pretty scary. Um, you know, for every miss now, she she's she's piling them on with the bleeds and and building up turn meter and just stacking up more and more bleeds. She's she's one of those characters that can take down a whole team if you're uh, not planning for her. Yeah, she's. I found her. I find her quite annoying, especially when I'm playing red alerts. If I don't get debuff immunity or kill her early, she becomes a nightmare. If you don't have anti <laughs> absolutely. Ogre, have Absolutely. I, have you played with her since her rework a lot? Not a lot, but I've definitely been playing with her this last like week or so now since the podcast. Since I got kind of shamed on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, that and we had the camo rework, so I'm like, I have to bust this out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I yeah. On paper, I agree. She wasn't like that. It's like okay, they added a new passive, and then you play with it, and you're like, oh my god, that passive's amazing. <laughs> you know, and it's just like. The little bit of changes that they did to her, they removed a little bit of variance uh, in the number of bleeds that she applies. They they upgraded her damage a bit, and they added that extra passive. And those things come together to make a mwah, beautiful character. Um, <laughs> she, she absolutely can wreck. If your opponent doesn't have a cannot-miss attack or buff immunity or something like that, she can absolutely house and you know take them all on by herself if that ends up happening. So... Uh, which is something that happens in Blade teams occasionally, is that you'll get hit and, oh, somebody's down. Oh, crap. You know, and you don't have time to enact that uh, that long-term strategy that a lot of Blade teams are. So I definitely appreciate that she can do that now. <clears throat> now with, um, so we kind of talked about it a little bit before the show started, but for Legendary Order, let's talk about what you think is essential i initially i think i go with three first yeah three three bleeds on each enemy is pretty important for an aoe and you agree with that joker 100 percent, definitely three's uh definitely got to be that first one you pick out now i think we have a little bit of um disagreement on the second one joker you like her five next for that turn meter yes um you know you get all you got your characters attacking her at the end there. If she's the last one standing and if they're all missing, she's she's building up a lot of turn meter and then able to stack on bleed after bleed after bleed by retaliating uh, uh, on turn. Um, and it could just make her that much more of a headache for your opponent to try to beat. Nogar, you, you think the one? Is that what you would go with? Okay. I, I personally like her one, yes, but... It is only a 40% chance to use the extra attack. It does seem like a tire, though, because even for me... It, it, it does awesome. feel like a tire. It does feel like a tire, but at the same it, time... It feels like a 75 it, to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it definitely feels like it's over 50. Um, but I think part of that is that you're using her basic so much. You yeah. just don't even notice. 
you know. And not only that, but you have call assisters and everything else, like they can trigger it. So you have a lot of ways to get it out there. I think that's part of it, um, which is why I like it. But something that everybody kind of knows about me, there's a few things that I always love, and that's turn meter manipulation and extra attacks. Those are two things that you pretty much are always wanting to take in a character. So I can see this argument going either way, definitely. Yeah, those are both very good skills. And I can see an argument for both of them. The five is a little more later in the match, and the one is kind of early in the match. So kind of depends on yeah, your It really depends on how you're playing. So I think I'll put her bracket at L3, because that seems like the three you really need, and the other two are just kind of a luxury. So what would you go with yeah. next, her two or her four? Her two is the enraged target, gain two evasion up, and the four is the 50% chance for extra evasion up duration, or 50% chance for evasion up duration plus one. That seems kind of crappy. I'm thinking the two, but what do you guys think? Well, it changes them from one turn to two turns. Yeah. But that's why. I, I, I go with the Dagger Deluge, too, because, uh, like I said, I, I would pick that five. And next up, you know, I, w- I would want to go with that so that we're stacking some more evasions on top of what she gains from the bleed just to, to really take advantage of that five. You agree with that, Ogre? I can see an argument for either one, honestly. Yeah, I, if it was 100% chance, I'd go with it, but 50% is... Like, I can honestly, I can see an argument to take the Enrage, depending. Like I don't care about the Enrage, enrage I care about the two evasion Still a good ups. debuff. Yeah, it's the two evasion ups that I'm after. I don't care about those Enrages at all. I don't like the Enrage, actually, because it just makes Wonder <laughs> Fine, Girl not miss. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that's, that's Wonder Girl. Everybody else is like, ah, I don't know what to do. Yeah. There, there's not a ton of can't-miss basics. But as long as you're paying attention to which ones those are, mostly Titans, um... <laughs> you know, and you're okay. And that dangerous yellow lantern Sinestro that you see everywhere. <laughs> so. That's fair. Yeah. You, you know, I ran into him the other day, and he's quite tanky. He's good. I mean, I actually he's, like him as a character. He's, he just, he's he really good. Just people forget that he's there. Yeah, there's just so many characters now. He's been bad now. for so long. Yeah, he's been just... bad for so long that... There's just so well, many I don't characters. think it is that he doesn't bring anything unique to the field. I mean, it's just... I, I look at so many strong and tanky greens and then it just sorry each each and every one of them just seems like a better choice than sinestro can we not get any greens for a while that's i would like (laughs) mystics and physicals for a good while and make them good because it seems like the overwhelmingly good characters are majority green so all you know why that is right you know why that is right why is that because Mystic is entirely dominated by Wonder Girls. Nobody bothers to look at anybody else. Yeah, <laughs> true. <Very true. laughs> Why bring a physical that can't kill Wonder Girl? Well, like, that's yeah. the issue. And that's the issue. The physical, no, I'm serious. You, that's the issue. I mean, you're right. There's there's a handful of ultra powerful Mystics that just over. They're so much better than the rest. And same thing with physicals. Like, why would you bring? Most people are like, why would I bring anybody but Castaway? Yeah. Right. yeah, I've seen the most common green guy get a rework that now just like knocks out Wonder Girl. That's Arcus. <laughs> yeah, he he's a brutal beast now, and and mm-hmm. be, you know, ultra farmable. Everybody can get him. The Mirror Master on our alliance has a Marb five, and he can just one shot anything. It's obscene. Yeah, I, I believe it. I believe it. Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys were. Um, how did you like your? How did you like the raids? I know um, you're probably not happy that bleed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like okay, the, so the biggest issue with the raids. The issue. Oh, God. <laughs> the issue is bleeds won't even appear on the raid boss, right? So that everybody is clear what we're talking about. Bleeds don't even appear on the raid boss. They don't stack. They don't do nothing. They're not even there. They are literally immune. To the one debuff. Sorry, two. Disease is also there. Um, those two debuffs, they're completely immune to. Which... They let them stun, which I was really surprised. I know, and that's what I was just about to get to. They can be stunned, they can be turn meter controlled, and never take a turn. They can have a million strength downs and never deal any damage. But they can't have a single bleed. Yeah, and I was, I was I running get, solo Hawkman in most the of my matches. Fear <laughs> I get the fear of, you know, the devs being like, oh, well, they'll just bleed out the boss and be able to one-shot him, essentially. I, I get that. I really do. Um, 
And there's a well, you know, fix with that. Facing these 150s, I, I don't think a stack of blades is really going to dent them. <laughs> Not to mention, I really the matches don't. aren't that long, so I would, you know. That's fair. I don't know why. Or make it just do reduced damage, you know, instead of two. That's what I, I was about to say. There's two fixes that I see for this. <clears throat> you can either make it so that the bleed does, you know, 0.3% instead of 3%, and then it's significantly reduced, and then you're still dealing damage, and the bleeds are still there. Everybody's happy. The alternative—it it was like an in-your-face this month too, because so many of those bonus tunes were yeah, bleeders, what, you know, Joker and Sire and Aqualad. It, harsh, Cheetah. very harsh. They should have, yep. or they could make it so that it takes the full damage, but they disappear at the end of the turn. You know, I would very much appreciate a Clayface-style passive. Yeah, I would very much appreciate that. Then again, if they Let introduce a Clayface-style passive in raids, dear lord, remember how long it took them to fix Clayface? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not talking about it. They're, death in the they're right. using Superman. They're using Superman in this raid anyway, and that character drops off debuffs in between turns anyway. Yeah. So well, I don't know why they just have his Kryptonian physiology passive kicking in here. Yeah, you could drop bleeds on him, but you got to stack a ton of bleeds on him in order to to utilize it. Um, Same thing with just Wonder Woman. She'll hand the bleeds back. No, I don't want does. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying that that's you know these are these characters' innate reactions to this. These are two characters right. that are very difficult to fight with bleed characters. Well, were difficult to fight with bleed characters. A lot of the reworks now have made it a lot easier. But anyway, point is, devs, please let us put the bleeds on these characters, and especially for next month's raid. Because we got Heat Wave, who's a premium, and he's going to be a bleeder, and, and pretty darn sure he's going to be a bonus point tune, probably a, a bonus five. So, yeah, before that raid rolls on and, you know, let's get those bleeds going, please. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right, guys, anything else on Siren? Obviously, she fits well in bleed teams, so team comps are kind of... She fits well in invasion teams, too, so she has that going for her. She fits well on AoE teams, if you're still rocking Green Arrow? Not too many, but a few people still... I mean, I've been busting them back out for Hawkman, so... Yeah, no, I mean, like I, like I said, there's, you know, times and places for it. So, and he's, you know, a farmable leader. Uh, she doesn't really the terribly best with Lex, but she's still pretty good. Um, but yeah, she definitely has her, her uses in her places. She's a lot of fun in an assist team, you know, whether you're just getting a black mask or, you know, I'm sure Hawk Girl as well. Um yeah, you know, Brainiac and gets gets that small chance of an assist, but you know, anytime she's got the bleeds going on there and, and somebody's calling out an assist and if she gets she's the lucky one pulled, that's another giant stack of bleeds going on somebody. Yep. She works well with Hal Jordan because of that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. And if she picks up that shield, man, she's already kinda tanky. Oof. That's all I got though. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope you all are quarantining well. And um, with I'm still at work. Joker's still at work. What are you talking about? I'm still at work. I'm working more than. Yeah, I still got work. Exactly. Did you guys want me to go through that uh, poll list uh, real quickly or no? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh well, let's let's just make that a separate episode. We'll just end it. And start. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Hi. This is Renee Sylvia 88, DC Legends moderator. Thank you for listening to this episode of WROL Broadcast. If you like this show, please check out patreon.com forward slash WROL Broadcast and find out how to get cool perks. DP was worried about the coronavirus, but we reminded him that this wasn't a computer virus. 